When I go into this book, I see myself. So when I see all the good that's supposed to come out of it, I see myself doing the good. When I see myself and to see the consequences of evil, I don't want to see myself getting the same reward of wickedness. I don't want that. And that will destroy the witchcraft of the mindset in our people. on each other to make change in the community anymore? Huh? Do we? Really? Kind of. Because last week we was out here teaching the people and my brother said, nah, I ain't really want to do nothing. Huh? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't Watch this. When we're voting, who is over that, that government? The, vote, the, the government that we're voting into or voting for, who are, is it us that's running that government? Ah, uh, no, no, no. You, that's the problem. Our government is the Bible. That's right. You understand that? But we're not going, a lot of our people don't go by the Bible. We want to vote for Obama. We want to vote for Biden. We want to vote for Trump. We want to vote for Nixon. We want to vote for Clinton. Because guess what? Obviously, the white man got the solution to all the black man problems. Let Bill Clinton play the saxophone for a couple measures, and obviously, he got the solution. Let Joe Biden give us a stimulus check. Obviously, he got a solution that'll keep us, you know, or fix some kind of our problem. But has that changed the state of our people? No, it has not. That's why God says, looking to this nation, the same nation that put us into slavery is vain, useless, no good. And that's what we have become as a people, vain, useless, no good. We've gotten spoiled by the comforts that America has given us. Finish that off. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. We've watched. Wanted, longed for, Stockholm Syndrome. This is what we wanted the same nation that put us in slavery to also be our saviors. That don't even make sense. We want the same people who raped, robbed, pillaged our people to come back and actually save us through policies that they already wrote to say that we were three-fifths of a man? What kind of foolishness? That's why God says it is vain help. Get Deuteronomy 28. Let's show the vain help in the curses for us being disobedient to God. Do you think we would get a reward or a punishment? You got children? Your ch you tell your son, I need you, I command that you come in the house before the street lights come on. He comes in the house one o'clock in the morning. What's going to happen in your household? Or what should happen in your household? I that huh? That's personal. Would there be a reward or consequences for going against your word? Consequences, plain and simple. A whooping, whatever, punishment, uh, what they call it, grounding? <laughs> it's a nice word. Grounding, time out, right? Well, guess what? The situation that our people are found in today is God's time out. Punishment, ass whooping. You understand? So us being going into slavery is God's ass whooping to us. And guess what? He we rejected him so much, he put the whip in somebody else's hand. And they don't care about us like God care about us. But the way that we show that we care about God is coming back to his commandments. So what was one of those curses? Read that. Matter of fact, I, I want a vain help uh oppression. Yeah, so read verse 15. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass. So things will happen. Read. 
If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if we disobey God's word, God's laws, God's commandments, if we disobey that, read. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, Lord. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. What is a curse? What is a curse? You say you don't, you're not sure what a curse is reading the Bible? Okay. Now, we just said that the curses fell upon us for disobeying God's laws. We just clarified that consequences will come out of disobeying God's laws. So, if God is saying, for disobeying me, you will have curses upon you, what would you deduce that to? What would you sum that up to? Would it be a curse, or a consequence, or a reward? All right, you said uh, you said all three of them. Okay, he gonna reward us for our wickedness. Okay, let's let's see what the reward of wickedness is. Bring it up. Let's get that in verse twenty eight. Let's see some of the curses. Let let's start clarifying what the curses are. Read Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight verse twenty eight. Uh -huh. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness uh -huh. and astonishment of heart. If you are blind, mad, crazy. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You said depending on what case it is. Now, that's madness in itself. What, watch this. Watch this. I want Before you light that cigarette up, I want you to read the side of that box. I'm going to show you madness, right? With, with you, what you just did. Bring read the side of that box. Read the side of that box. Bring it up! I want you to read it on the mic. Read it on the mic. <laughs> read it on the mic. Read it on the mic, bro. Read it on the mic, you know? Uh, smoking by pregnant women may result in fatal injuries and premeditation birth and low birth weight. Now, if that would happen to a pregnant woman, what is the, what are those, it's, I'm sure it's in all caps. What was, before you read that, it said a Surgeon General's what? Surgeon General's warning. So if it's dangerous to pregnant women, wouldn't it be dangerous to all people who participate in that activity? So when God smites us with blindness, madness, and astonishment of heart, you just read a warning from the white man to tell you, really, you don't need to do this, but if you do it, you're going to make me rich and I can kill you easily. And you're accepting that. Huh? Everybody who's smitten with the curses of God through disobedience. You understand that? So God is showing us that we must obey to actually show forth wisdom. If we want to, uh, if we want some real help, the help comes from the Lord. And guess what he's telling us to do? Simple commandments. Keep your temple clean. Don't smoke. Don't defile your temple. You understand that? But if you follow the white man more than you gonna follow God, you're still a slave. Point blank, period. And there's no other way to say that. Free! Slavery is a mentality nowadays. Let's get that in Deuteronomy 28. Read uh, verse 40. I want you to hear the mental slavery before you leave. I need you to know that either you're going to be a mental slave when you walk off, or you're going to turn yourself back and repent to be a king, a ruler on the face of this earth. Simple. Listen, listen, listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Therefore, shut them so here in America, my brother right here, what's your name? TJ. TJ, what's your nationality? I'm going to ask you. So-called, so-called Mexican. Now, the reason why I say so-called, come over here, TJ. I'm going to show you something. Because what has happened to our people is we have taken on these names in our captivities. But what does God call you? You, you said you're a so-called Mexican. But Mexican, you won't find in the Bible. But everybody, all, all so-called Mexicans, they, they believe in the Bible, right? But what do you see, uh, have you ever seen Mexico in the Bible? No. Have you ever seen Issachar in the Bible? No, you haven't. Oh, you got to open it up. And then you got to identify yourself. So watch this. We're going to show you Issachar in the Bible. But I want you to stay at Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Then we want to go to Genesis 49. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Bring it up. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So what we're reading in the Bible is what has happened to the Israelites. 
the nation of Israel. What has happened to us is now we serve our enemies. Is that still happening till this day? Do we pay taxes? Do we work in the fields, cotton fields, fruit fields for our enemies? Are they not destroying our people at the borders when they trying to come? Are they not turning our people against one another at Bring the borders? Is that not happening amongst our people? It is. But this is what is happening to the children of Israel. Read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. The Lord sent our enemies against us because we disobeyed him. Now, matter of fact, amongst Aztec and Mayan history, weren't they sacrificing unlawful animals or giving unlawful sacrifices? Sacrificing humans, sacrificing jaguars, lizards, all kind of iguanas and craziness. But that, that's not the sacrifices that God was asking for. Right. You understand that? Right, right. So for our disobedience, God says, I'm going to punish you and I'm going to put you in the hand of your enemies. That's for right. us, we call them slave masters. That's right. For the, uh, the so-called Hispanics, Native Americans, they call them conquistadores. Bring it out. See? Now, read on. In hunger uh -huh. and in thirst. So we have to serve our enemies when we're hungry. Yeah. McDonald's, Wendy's. Hey. Uh huh. Hey, check it out, you know, no disrespect. Ain't no disrespect. I kind of got, I kind of, you know, I'm going, but I hear, I heard, I heard what you said. Right. But I'm, I'm on a miss, bro. I, I got to get a lot of things. But hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, hey, watch this. You know? Now, the question would be, the question would be, where are you going? I got, I, I got to get a lot of things. Don't go to get my oh, life right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? All right. So that's why you're here. You didn't even quit that. Yeah, man, God is good, man, for sure. Right. Now, what color is Christ? Hey, I don't know, bro. I don't know. You don't know? Now, watch this. Get John 14 and 6. Get John 14. And, and you need to listen hey. to this. If you're trying to find your way, hey, hey. if hey. you're trying to find your way, the only way to do it is by the Bible. Hey, Point that's right. Hey, I got a Bible. I got a Bible. Right. I read the Bible every day, bro. Okay. But do you understand? That? Hold on, hold on, Paul. So we're going to stop. We're going to stop it. Hey, real, real quick. Hey, real quick. You said you read the Bible, but you said you never saw your identity in the Bible. Bring it up. So, we were talking about mindset earlier. The mindset that you're in right now is a Mexican mindset. The mindset we're giving you from God is your rightful place as a priest and a ruler. It's a mindset change. But that's the hardest thing for the black man, Hispanic man, Native American man. That's all. So keep reading. This is what we were talking about, that mental slavery. Read on. Yes. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Uh -huh. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, uh -huh. the truth, and the life. So if you're trying to find your way, you want the truth, and you want to find a real way of living, you got to come back to the Bible to discover that. That's right. All right, brother. Hey, God bless you, homie. Now, how does God bless? What, where do we get these blessings from? Where do we get these blessings from? Get that, uh, Revelation 22, 14. Because what has happened is our people have lost track of themselves. And, and we run away from that thing. So that's why I got to ask my brother, where is he really going if Christ is the way? Right. If Christ is the way, where are you going? Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. So to my brother TJ, the way that we will get blessings is if we do the commandments. That's right. But how would you know that the commandments pertain to you if you think as a Mexican that the Bible pertains to everybody? Or, or, or all we got to do is just open the book and God just pours out his blessings. God has to give you the understanding of his commandments first for you to do them. Read on. That they may have right to the tree of life. And through keeping God's commandments, we'll earn our way into salvation. Okay, bring it on. Witchcraft. We were talking about that earlier. Okay, I want that in First okay, Samuel. Okay. We're going to talk about what witchcraft is according to the Bible. Okay. Y'all understand that? Okay. What has happened to our people is we've gotten different minds that put us in the spirit of disobedience. Anything outside of the obedience of God is witchcraft. That's understand right. that? Okay. So let's read that out of the Bible. Where okay. did I get that notion from? Okay. Read. This is the book of 1 Samuel, oh, chapter 15 and 23. Yeah. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So witchcraft now, see, is rebelling right? against God. Now, I'm not, I'm not what are we teaching God. to our people? Just hold I'm on, right. brother, because we're God. teaching the people. Matter of fact, get that in Nehemiah 8 and 8. Okay, what what does the prophets do? Right? My sister, yeah, my right? sister, 
Prophet, what do the prophets do? What do prophets of God do? Well, I don't read the number. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a simple question. If you don't know, that's why we're out here to teach. She ain't got to answer that. And that's why, watch this. She can answer for herself. She didn't know you from a can of paint before you came okay, up here. But you saw, so but watch you saw, this. Be quiet she saw, and let the sister she saw, deal with God. Hold up. Read that. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 8. This is what the prophets of God actually do. Read. So they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly. They read in the book. They read in the book of the law of God distinctly. Laws would determine whether you're obedient or disobedient. That's right. Anything of disobedience is of Satan. And guess what? Satan got the victory over that system. That's right. That's what happened. That's why he's Satan got the victory, and that's why he's happy. And guess what? Watch this. Watch this. The church that he's probably over is probably doing the same thing. Tearing apart households. Keeping single parent households. But that is the spirit of Satan that is within most of our men that they learn from who? White man Jesus. And he's a so-called, he says he's a builder of the community. Talking about he's a mason. What are you building when you're destroying your people? That's right. Most of the York right, Scottish right, Prince Hall, when you go to their local churches in our neighborhoods, they have white man Jesus on the wall. Destroying the minds of our people. But yet, where his... I ain't even gonna go that far. The Bible says you should have your feet shod with the gospel of peace. <laughs> That's right. And he's over here being deceitful. I hate to be that physical little with that situation. But what is he going around doing? Deceiving the people. So did we not just see witchcraft? We did that. Now watch this. The Bible says, read it again, Nehemiah 8 and 8. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 8. Uh -huh. So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly. Now is that not what we're doing? We open the book. Give you understanding. If there's a question mark, we already have the understanding on what will answer your question. You have to stay in context. If we're going to talk about slavery, there are very few things that should be inserted into that conversation. If we're going to talk about uh, the oppressor beating the slave and then there's salvation for the white man who was the oppressor, that's going to kind of throw you off a little bit. That don't add in the conversation, do it. But read it again. So they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly. Giving the century. And gave the sense. Gave the sense. Now, earlier he said, too, I don't have to prove anything. Wait. Is that a spirit of obedience or disobedience? Huh? Disobedience. Let's get that in Thessalonians. What does God say to his prophets? My brother right here, what's your name? Warren. Warren. How would you prove to me your name is Warren? What would you produce? Birth certificate. birth certificate, some type of record. Do you agree? If I ask you what your date of birth is, what would you say? Uh, and guess what? When you went to the hospital, they made sure that they could identify that by giving you a record to bear. So what does God tell the prophets to do? Bear a record as well. And then with those records, what should we do? Read. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 21. Uh -huh. Prove all things. So he said, I don't have to prove anything. So what spirit did we just see in the wheelchair with no legs? We saw a disobedient satanic spirit. That's and he right. calls himself a mason. That's right. So some type of example that the masons just sent out, if that's their representative, our people don't need to be following that right. at all. That's because right. guess who they're following? The witchcraft of white man Jesus. That's and right. that's what the Bible teaches. Let's get the record of what our Lord and Savior looks like. Let's get that Revelation 114 and you can come back up. What, because it's going to talk about bearing record, proving all things, all things being evident for our learning. Now watch this. I'm going to deal with, your, uh, deal with the brothers having their hats on. Because that will show the spirit of obedience as well. But read Revelation 1 and 1 and I want down to where it says bear record. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So through these records, through the revelation of Jesus Christ, we're going to be able to tell the real from the fake, and God is going to show it to his designated people, the Israelites, who have been lost, scattered, destroyed as a people. Ain't that how we feel about ourselves, looking at our condition? Destroyed as a people? trying to figure out what way is up. How do we get ourselves out of this condition? We got to come back to the laws of God. Right. It's that simple. Why are we even here? The simple answer is disobedience. That's why I don't got time for the foolishness with bro. 
He, he trying to destroy our people. No, nah, we can't allow that. We're already destroyed. Right. Now, the white man has put the whip in our own hands. Now we taskmasters over our own people to keep them destroyed. Right. That's evil as hell. Read on. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, uh -huh. who bear record of the word of God. Who bear record of the word of God. So what does that mean? He wrote it down. Now read verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. So what's written down is written down for proof, evidence, so that those who are the servants of God may read it and understand what their job is to do. Know how to recognize the real from the fake. Read verse 14. This is what John saw. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, most black churches have this image up. Is his hair white? Is his hair woolly? No. Read. As white as snow. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So, is any of this matching this description? White, woolly hair. No. Huh? He said, this ain't, I've seen this all my life. That don't match. But this over here does match. So when that brother came up and said, well, who's this? Obviously, he ain't read the Bible. Because the Bible describes the Messiah looking That's just right. like that. That's right. Or, well, this is a, I ain't going to say just like that. It's a better description. We've been living by the lies for so long, it's hard for us to see each other as Christ. When I get the real understanding of who Christ is, what he looks like, what he represents, I can look at my brother with a little different honor. I can see you as a king. Right. I'll deal with you as a king. And when you on that BS, I can also correct you according to the advice that's given to kings. Right. That makes sense? Yeah. Read on. <laughs> and his feet like unto fine brass. Now, my sister right here, what color is brass? Brass. 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 Kind of like a penny, I'm hearing it in the background. Dang. Gold. gold, like copper, right? Like dirt. So, like dirt. So, brown. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. So, Christ has never been pale face, like the uh, uh, Native Americans say. Never been a redneck. Never. Uh, never. <laughs> it says he is as if he burned in a furnace. Stay with me. And his feet, verse 15, and his feet. Like unto fine brass. So Christ's skin was brown. Read. Now let's see how brown he was. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. And that was already brought out to you earlier, right? So what color is Jesus Christ of the Bible? Preach! Huh? Black. And you saw what my brother did. That, that's how you know he took that to heart. He said, it looked just like me. Don't we need that in our community? Well, we can say, when I go into this book, I see myself. So when I see all the good that's supposed to come out of it, I see myself doing the good. When I see myself and to see the consequences of evil, I don't want to see myself getting the same reward of wickedness. I don't want that. And that will destroy the witchcraft of the mindset in our people. Plain and simple. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.